Hi guys. I cannot think of a better place to chronicle the collapse of a planet than out in the middle of the woods, in the middle of nowhere, in rural upstate New York. Here at, uh, in the smoked, choked hellscape of Bugs in a Jar Farm. In the Finger Lakes of New York, here on this 47 degree Wednesday, June 7th. We are not going to see 70 degrees in Ithaca, New York, till it's Saturday afternoon. We will not be seeing 70 degrees, but we will be seeing plenty of this smoke and, uh, Good Lord, I hear that New York City is now the most polluted city on the planet today. And uh, for once, we cannot thank the 8 million clueless morons living in New York for it. But anyway, I'm not here to talk about uh, the apocalypse unfolding in New York I'm here to talk about what I'm sure every other Doomer <clears throat> blogger is talking about, and unless you live under a rock, you, I'm sure this was right up, this was literally in the top of Yahoo News' doom scrolling this morning. This is the first thing I, well, the first thing I saw was the smoke billowing outside my tiny house window. <clears throat> the second thing I saw was this headline. This is the French news service, although <clears throat> it's all over the mainstream media today. Arctic could be ice-free a decade earlier than thought. Hmm. This is how the French news service AFP is spinning this story. The Arctic Ocean's ice cap will disappear in summer as soon as the 2030s and a decade earlier than thought. <clears throat> no matter how aggressively humanity draws down the carbon pollution that drives global warming, scientists said Tuesday. Even capping global warming at one and a half degrees Celsius in line with the Paris Agreement Climate Treaty, which of course is never going to happen anyway. That ship sailed 30 years ago. But even if Rumpelstiltskin was able to cap global warming at one and a half degrees, that would not prevent, that will not prevent the North Pole's vast expanse of floating ice from melting away in September, they reported in the journal Nature Communications. This is uh, co-author Dick Knotts, a professor at the University of Hamburg's Institute of Oceanography. Quote, it is too late to still protect the Arctic summer sea ice as a landscape and as a habitat. This will be the first major component of our climate system that we lose because of our emission of greenhouse gases closed. Quote, um, <clears throat> Decreased ice cover has serious impacts over time on weather, people, and ecosystems, not just within the Arctic region, but globally. This is lead author Sung Ki Min uh, from South Korea. Quote, it can accelerate global warming by melting permafrost laden with greenhouse gases and sea level rise by melting the Greenland ice sheet. And uh, we'll talk about the difference for those people still not understanding a land-based ice sheet versus sea ice. 
um, Greenland's kilometer kilometers thick blanket of ice contains enough frozen water to lift oceans six meters. By contrast, melting sea ice has no discernible impact on sea levels because the ice is already in ocean water like ice cubes in a glass. But it still does feed into a vicious circle of warming. Uh, anybody who's been down in the Dumasphere for more than kindergarten knows all about the albedo effect. About 90% of the sun's energy that hits white sea ice is reflected back into space, but when the sunlight hits dark, unfrozen, unfrozen, ocean water instead, nearly the same amount of that energy is absorbed by the ocean and spread across the globe. Both the North and South Pole regions have warmed by 3 degrees Celsius compared to late 19th century levels, nearly three times the global average. And this is what I, I am continually seeing this, all of this talk about this one and a half degree uh, global, global average uh, rise. But in, in the Arctic, it's not evenly spaced. That's when, because uh, there's some areas of the globe, although I don't know where they are, uh, that have not risen that much. So, but the the Arctic is already at 3C higher and going through the roof. And the same for the Amazon rainforest is, I think, at least three degrees higher. So, they're, you know, it's like the most important areas of the globe, uh, you know, shot through one and a half uh, years ago. Uh, so I don't know what all of this hullabaloo is about this one and a half C. But anyway, that's just me. Um, so North and South Pole regions have been warmed by three degrees C. <clears throat> An ice-free, uh, <clears throat> an ice-free September in the 2030s, quote, is a decade faster than in recent projections of the IPCC, the UN's science advisory body. In its landmark 2021 report, the IPCC forecast with, quote, high confidence that the Arctic Ocean would become virtually ice-free at least once by mid-century, and even then, only under more extreme greenhouse gas emission scenarios. The new study, which draws from observational data covering the period 1979 to 2019, to adjust the IPCC models, finds that threshold will most likely be crossed in the 2040s, so I am uh, I'm I'm a little bit con confused by this statement, guys. I'm looking at like how many articles. This article is saying the 2030s. Here is the Independent. Ice-free Arctic summers are now unavoidable and could happen as soon as the 2030s. Uh, here is CNN, the Arctic may be sea ice free in summer by the 2030s, new study says. Here's the Daily Beast, the Arctic's summer sea ice may be completely gone after 2030, and that is not a true statement. Here is USA Today, the Arctic could be ice free in the summer by the 2030s. Um, so I'm, okay, I guess it's most 
likely now uh, they're saying will most likely be crossed in the 2040s. Okay, but on the outside margins, they're saying the 30s, uh, 2030s, and of course, by the time we get to 2030, uh, they'll be saying 2029 probably. Um, Men and his colleagues also calculated that human activity was responsible for up to 90% of the ice caps shrinking with only minor impacts from natural factors such as solar and volcanic activity. The record minimum sea ice extent in the Arctic, 3.4 million square kilometers or 1.3 million square miles occurred in 2012 with the second and third lowest ice covered areas in 2020 and 2019 respectively and i and i'm just not going to for the hundredth time on my own channel uh talk about the difference between sea ice extent and sea ice volume uh if you're a doomer and don't understand it uh, this, this whole thing where they talk about sea ice extent and don't mention sea ice volume, you, you, you know, it's, uh, anyway, I'm not going to go off uh, on uh, that broken record rant. Um, okay, as Book Hermit, I'm sure, will point out to you, scientists describe the Arctic Ocean as, quote, ice-free if the area covered by ice is less than one million square kilometers, about 7% of the ocean's total area. So one million, so it can still have 999,000 square kilometers of ice, probably very thin ice, uh, thin, broken up, mushy ice, and be called ice-free. But uh, that what it means technically is 93% ice free. So book hermit, just so you understand that uh, it's that one million square miles uh, of, of thin, slushy, broken up ice uh, is seven percent of the Arctic Ocean. Meanwhile, sea ice in Antarctica dropped to 1.92 million square kilometers in February, the lowest level on record, and almost 1 million square kilometers below the 1990-2020 average. And there you go. And, uh... Anyway, then of course, uh... Of course, all of the, uh... Climate change deniers pouring in. Uh, all of these people, uh... Talking about, uh... You know how that this is climate alarmism. I honestly don't know if Anthony is being, I'm, I'm going to give Anthony credit for being ironic. Uh, <clears throat> I, I like Anthony from 56 seconds ago. It's not humans. It is not humans. It is the things we humans use. Cars, factories, fossil fuels, etc. It is not humans causing climate change. It's the things that we use. You know, just those mother nature made cars, factories, fossil fuels. <laughs> anyway, we're going to let uh, Anthony uh, uh, we're going to give him the benefit of the doubt that he was being ironic in that hilarious comment. Uh, 
Okay, but we're going to come back. I'm going to make it a separate rant uh, also from the, uh, the French news service. 10 billion global population, quote, unsustainable, says U.S. climate envoy John Kerry. Uh, <laughs> anyway, we're going to come back and make this one a second uh, rant if I don't choke on the wildfire smoke coming right up. Bye, guys.